Hi, I'm uh, Anatole Kreitzer, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the brain, which uh, is arguably one of the most complex systems in the universe, actually. And, you know, we've been kind of working our way up in complexity from viruses to cells to tissues. Todd mentioned higher order interactions, and I think the brain is essentially defined by higher order interactions on a, on a scale that's almost impossible to comprehend. Um, there are 86 billion neurons in the human brain. This is sort of most recent estimate, and many more uh, support cells. So we're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 billion, you know, half a trillion cells in, in your head. And, uh, and this is really on the same scale as, you know, stars in the, in the galaxy or, or, or trees in the Amazon rainforest. And I like this analogy of the Amazon rainforest because I think this analogy sort of extends a little further. So... Uh, in addition to there being merely, you know, 86 billion neurons, there, there's actually a, a vast diversity of, uh, of cell types. So there, there's no such thing as just a neuron. There's actually many different kinds of neurons. They come in all different shapes and sizes and functions. They're connected to each other in very unique ways. And it's sort of, sort of like a jungle, actually, where you have many different kinds of trees and vines and plants and their roots and their their leaves and their branches are all intertwined with each other. Um, it's really a, a remarkable structure. But this, this vast complexity has actually led to, to many challenges as well. So we have probably the, the worst therapies, really the, the fewest therapies available for, for diseases of the brain. And I think this is largely due to, to this complexity and due to really a paucity of ways to understand uh, the function of such a complex system. Um, the state of the art, believe it or not, is really just to stick wires in the brain and either stimulate specific spots or, or record specific spots. And this is a pretty crude technology. But uh, along with the, th the theme of this, of this uh, symposium, engineering within the last 20 to 30 years has really provided some major breakthroughs. So um, in terms of visualizing the brain and visualizing this, this diversity of cell types, uh, there are, are proteins that have been discovered and sort of lifted from other organisms. So there's a green fluorescent protein from jellyfish, and uh, that protein, the DNA encoding that, can be inserted into a brain cell, and it can light up the brain cell in all its, all its uh, beauty. And you can do this for different kinds of cells and really visualize their structures uh, in an intact brain, actually in a living animal you can do this. Um, there, uh, these proteins have been modified to allow more than just the visualization of structure. It's also now possible to look at activity. Uh, so brain cells are sort of, they're electrically active. They talk to each other. Uh, and, that, and that sort of, this activity of, of the brain, this electrical activity, really gives rise to things like consciousness and memory and all the things that kind of define human behavior, animal behavior. And we can visualize that activity in real time. And we can do that in animals that are awake and behaving. Um, there are also uh, newly engineered uh, proteins for controlling the activity of brain cells. So there are proteins from algae that uh, can be, again, put the DNA can be put into neurons, and uh, those neurons can make these proteins. And these proteins can allow us to turn activity on or turn at, or actually turn off activity in brain cells, really at a millisecond timescale. So we can do this, you know, incredibly quickly using light. And we can do this again in animals that are awake and behaving. And this can give us incredible insight into the function of the brain. Um, there have been remarkable uh, advances in targeting these tools, right? We, wanna, we don't want to just put these tools in the brain haphazard. We actually want to put them into very specific kinds of cells so we can begin to ask, well, what's the function of this cell? What's the function of this cell? And so using genetics, uh, we, can, we can actually specify uh, which cells express the proteins that, that we want to, uh, you know, use to, to visualize activity or structure. And then uh, the delivery, of course, is critical. And it turns out viruses have been the key to delivering a lot of these, uh, these tools into the brain, right? So, uh, you know, Lior mentioned, well, what do viruses do? They actually infect cells and they make DNA. Uh, and we can co-opt that. We can co-opt the virus and we can have it make these molecular tools that we want to use to visualize the cells. So we can put these into viruses, inject the viruses in the brain, uh, and now we can light up specific kinds of cells. 
Um, and finally, uh, there's been remarkable advances in the kind of mechanical engineering, optical engineering, that allow us to actually record and visualize all of these things on a sort of a microscopic scale. So micro endoscopes that can actually be inserted into the brain and provide literally kind of a window into, the, into this activity, really without perturbing you know, the behavior of the animal. Um, and so this is just giving us unprecedented insight into, into how the brain functions. So, you know, at this point, we can now actually begin to look at, at disease and we can map the uh, dysfunction of specific cell types onto symptoms of very specific diseases. So in my lab, we're interested in Parkinson's disease. We were able to uh, control one specific kind of cell uh, deep in the core of the brain, in the basal ganglia, and actually mimic certain symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We could actually have the animals suppress their movement uh, by turning on this circuit. So this tells us that this circuit must be critical for these specific symptoms. And that in turn will allow us to develop new therapies that are much more specific because we can now target those specific cells. We can read out the genetic information in those cells and we can look for novel targets. Uh, and this will also allow us perhaps to actually develop new devices that can specifically target uh, cells in the brain. So uh, with that, if you want to hear more, uh, please come talk to me afterwards. Thank you.